Hello everyone and welcome back to How Do We Function. This is episode 5 with Dr. Carla Stanton. Hello and welcome. Hello and thank you for having me today. I'm really excited to connect with you and all your listeners and yeah, see where we go today with this. So thank you for having me on. It's a lot of fun because she's from the UK and we love our UK <laughs> accent. So. <Yeah. laughs> um, before we begin, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, so as I said, I'm a UK-based uh, doctor, medical doctor, and I suffered from eczema from the age of three months. And I'm now a sort of trained in family medicine, and I specialize in dermatology, because I kind of wanted to understand about my body and about my condition. And I've kind of been on a bit of a, a personal journey, really, in the last few years. I kind of went into dermatology and started lecturing. I used to be a lecturer at the a clinical teaching fellow at one of our main universities here in, in, in Nottingham. And I kind of was getting frustrated because I was getting more and more stressed and my and my condition, my eczema was flaring up. And I had, um, one of my, my sisters got sick as well. She had a, she has an autoimmune condition. So I just started to get a little bit disheartened, if you like, with some of the limitations of conventional medicine. Although it has a place and it's absolutely fantastic, particularly in the acute setting, I was I was just wanting to look for some of the root causes of mine and my sister's condition. I felt that perhaps some of the conventional model treats the symptoms a bit more downstream. It has a place, but it's kind of where you start. And looking back through that journey, and I'm, so on that sort of note, I started to look into really personal development and nutrition and a lot of exciting stuff, which is coming out now about you know epigenetics and the microbiome and all this new stuff. Uh, that's coming to the fore, and, and through that, I've been trying to create a really holistic eczema treatment model. That's my kind of plan long term. And I'm still on this journey, and I'm about to go next month to California to join the Functional Medicine Institute to start learning under them too. So it's really exciting to see where it goes. But um, yeah, that's essentially where, where I'm at at the moment. So thank you for having me on today to start this chat about stress, which is a, a huge part of my eczema journey and something that I see as a general practitioner a lot and how it impacts on our health and something I'm really passionate about. So, yeah. Yes, awesome. Um, that's really exciting about the functional medicine. So, uh, maybe we might have her back on to talk about that experience. We shall see. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I guess my first question is, even though it sounds like a strange question, uh, what is stress? Like, are there different types and kinds of stress? Yeah. So, uh, broadly speaking, I would say stress is anything that just throws us off balance. Um, and there are kind of three different types of stress if you want to kind of categorize it. So there's there's physical stress, so like traumas, strains, sprains, and like with eczema or your skin, you might think of that as like scratching, that's a physical trauma. Another type of stress is like chemical stress, so that's the second type of stress. So that might be toxins or irritants or, you know, uh, low glucose or hangovers, or lots of these different chemicals that we take in. And in eczema, I suppose, you might think about irritants or, or certain things we're allergic to or certain drugs as well that can affect, affect our skin. And the third type, the one that I'm really excited about, is, is the emotional stress because I think that's the part that we is most empowering because we can change it the most. And emotional stress can be any sort of thing where we tend to feel overwhelmed. Really, all emotional stress is when we feel a lack of control over something, you know? Um, when we feel uh, that there's no certainty, when what we want to have happen in what's going on in our inner world, what we'd like to have happen isn't happening in our outer world, and there's a conflict there. And we all experience extreme emotional stress, whether it's in work or whether it's a health condition, and you know, with eczema, with our skin, wondering what's causing it, when it's gonna go away, What's going to make it better? Why is it flaring up? All these things that go on and worrying about being outside and seeing people and what am I going to wear? All these things that we, we worry about as extra sufferers or, you know, with topical cerebral So um, that's kind of really the, the three main things that, um, that, are, that are sort of fit into the stress um, model. But sort of more broadly speaking, we, we as human beings exist in two states of being. So we either live in this stressed um, sort of zone or we live in a state of relaxation so people might know it's like stress as being like the fight or flight response mm -hmm. you know, um, and I call that the red zone 
And then the other one, the green zone, I like to call it, it's like the relaxation. It's also called like the feed and breed or rest and digest. It's kind of where we heal. This green zone is where we heal. And they both serve a purpose. The way that we're designed is that we can only live in one state or the other, not in the middle. Um, because of our, of our anatomy, because of our nervous system, we actually have an entire nervous system which is dedicated to this called the autonomic nervous system. And it's either firing off the red zone or firing off the green zone. And the red zone serves a purpose, but it's very energy consuming. It kind of can be at the expense of long-term building projects to sustain us and keep us healthy. So, um, and many of us can spend more time in the red zone than we should. And I was certainly doing this for a long period of time. In fact, they, it's felt these days that most of us spend about 70% of our time in this state of stress. Um, and, and when we should be, it should really be the other way around, you know, at least spending most of the time in this green zone where we can heal, where we can repair, where all these sort of mechanisms to keep us healthy and happy can go on. Um, so that's kind of the, the two different states really and I think really what's unique about us humans and why I think emotional stress is a really important factor is that we as human beings can um, have a stressful experience so if you relate it to an animal for example so this is where it, it works it works really well so an animal in the wild um, say a zebra is in the Serengeti and it's munching away it's in this green zone it's resting and digesting and then it sees a lion and it starts to run away. So it immediately activates this red zone, mm -hmm. which puts all the energy into the muscles and allows them to run away. And if they outrun the tiger or lion, should I say, and they start, they'll just go back to grazing again. And in 15 minutes, they're back in the green zone, right? So they've only just gone there for a little bit and come back. Whereas us humans, you might have a really traumatic event where you get stressed, either it's you know, you nearly get cut up at a junction or, you know, a road traffic accident or someone's chasing you. Or it can be, you know, a stress like having loads of emails and loads of work to do or meeting someone new or all these things. So we can have this stressful event, but we also can make the thought, we can make um, our internal thoughts more real than anything else. So we can replay and revisit. And many of us who've had stressful events, we we'll revisit it and play over and over and over again or worry about things in the future, or ruminate about our past. So we can stay in this state regardless of what's going on. Um, so, and I think I was certainly doing that, and that was affecting my, my eczema hugely. So that's kind of, in a broad sense, what stress is, and how it kind of we live in these two different states. You no, know, that's, that's really interesting, especially the, the good analogy that you had of, you know, the animals, they can just go from one to the other very quickly. When we can sit here and ruminate forever on something and cause our own stress so that was really interesting um yeah. but i guess the next biggest thing is when it comes to stress are there hormones in our body that it affects yeah i mean classically sort of there's two main hormones of stress really that we we sort of are most familiar with and that's adrenaline um so adrenaline just kind of shuts off i don't know if you you know when you get butterflies in your stomach when you're a bit nervous um, that's basically adrenaline working. What adrenaline does, it, it, sh it squeezes the blood vessels around your tummy. It stops you digesting, resting and digesting, this green zone. And it diverts blood to your muscles so that you can fight or flight or whatever you need to do um, to survive. So it kind of has that acute effect. It acts instantly. And the other sort of main hormone of stress is cortisol. And that kind of is a bit more of a longer term sort of hormone of stress and Particularly in the in the short term, it's very good. It it works. It, it functions in that it's anti. It reduces inflammation. It reduces pain. It releases glucose. So it releases releases sugar into the into our bloodstream so that we have energy to run away. So if we are running away from a threat, you know we're not feeling pain if we're running. We we keep going. So it, it works really well in that sense. Um, but these are these release these. Re, producing these hormones is at the expense of other hormones and other processes. It's just diverting us all to this survival. And the, the strange thing is that, that with these hormones is that they're actually incredibly addictive, which is something that I didn't realize, but I, I started to notice in myself. And if you think about, um, so caffeine releases adrenaline, and a lot of us can be addicted to caffeine. You want that rush, it perks you up. And if you've ever... Um, particularly with oral steroids, you might uh, people might have noticed this that often when you first start taking it, when you first start taking it, 
that's the important difference. It tends to give you a bit of a boost. And um, so it's, it's, very, it's very addictive, very stimulating. And often I certainly found myself recreating these hormones of stress through my thoughts, getting stressed when I didn't need to be stressed and creating situations when I didn't need to be stressed, not realizing that it was just because I was addicted. My body was getting used to having these hormones released all the time and it was keeping me going. But it was kind of at the expense of my health longer term. So those are kind of the two main um, hormones of stress that we're all aware of. And just if some people don't know, um, when she's talking about oral steroids, it's cortisone, like hydrocortisone, like we put on our skin, that's a synthetic form of cortisol. That's right, yeah. So, yeah, when you put steroids on your your skin, uh, you know, to reduce the inflammation usually, um, there are different types, obviously lots of different types and potency, and we can take them orally as well, and they have slightly different effects on us internally. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, many of us so will be familiar with, with steroids using them synthetically on our skin and taking them internally too. Yeah. Well, when it comes to those hormones, what can happen if you're overproducing or underproducing them? I mean, usually we're kind of familiar with us overproducing them, because as I said, most of us spend about 70% of the time living in this red zone. So generally speaking, we're, we're usually overproducing them. And, you know, in the short term, as I say, that works. It keeps us alive. It keeps us safe. But if we're living in there long term, that's when it can be at the cost of our health. When we have raised cortisol and adrenaline, our immune system, which requires a lot of energy, is sort of down-regulated. It's not as sharp. It's, it's not being turned on and regulated as much. And that can affect particularly with skin things, it can affect sort of making you more prone to infection. Us as eczema sufferers are, are more prone to certain infections of the skin and if you're using steroids, you can be too. Um, and it affects wound healing. Um, it reduces the collagen in your skin too over time, which is a ma- one of the main component, components of sort of um, connective tissue. Um, and it ha- has lots of, lots of effects really. It can affect sort of the salt balance within your body. Um, and that can affect your memory too. If you've ever been stressed long term, you might notice that um, your uh, your memory, your short term memory, isn't great uh, because it, it it has been shown to affect your short term memory. But that is reversible when you stop them. So that has been has been shown when the cortisol goes back to normal. So it, it can really affect someone with eczema. For sure, yeah. I mean, if you're um, if you're stressed. So as we know, typically when you have eczema in the short term, you can use steroids to reduce the inflammation, it reduces the pain. But if prolonged, it stops that really necessary healing um, of the skin that we need um, to be healthy. And it kind of throws you off balance. If you're chronically stressed, it throws you off balance and it can cause a flare. And that was certainly my experience, whether, you know, it's uh, certain chemical irritants in our body or emotional stress. And um, that can cause a flare-up, and it turns down this sort of repair and healing. And you know, we know that you know, uh, long-term stress. I mean, eczema is leaky skin. That's kind of what it is. And steroids can make our skin more leaky too. So it can make us more prone to irritants getting in our skin and causing a flare-up uh, and making us feel unwell. So, um, so yeah, it has a real impact there with stress and eczema. Well, what would be some ways to help de-stress yeah yeah so um brilliant question it, it kind of depends what the stress is so um so if i go back to the, the three different types of stress if there's a you know physical chemical or emotional stress so if you're having a physical stress you know you notice you've got skin irritation if something irritates you'll know certain certain um as uh, materials really irritate your skin or certain temperatures physically irritate the skin so Knowing that and being mindful of that can reduce the stress, the physical stress, and reducing the amount that you itch can help, obviously. If there's certain chemical things that are causing stress to your body, um, it's really just being able to identify things that can irritate your skin, you know, whether it's cat hair or, or what, whatever sort of chemical it can come into contact with, which irritates it, maybe something you're using on your skin. And also some foods can be shown to irritate our skin, and it's really useful to have a food diary if you're worried that there may be a trigger but just bear in mind with a lot of people who have eczema and, and irritation of, of, of certain foods, it can take up to three days before you'll notice a difference. So, for example, some people sometimes eliminate certain foods from their diet and then they'll reintroduce them and they'll 
not notice any difference straight away. It can take up to three days before you'll notice a reaction to it, depending on the type of allergy or irritation that you have to it. So that's just worth bearing in mind. Um, and there are other things, you know, in your diet which can reduce the chemical stress. Having a clean diet, it's been shown that sort of things like magnesium can reduce cortisol. Um, high dose vitamin C can do that. Um, omega threes can do that too, and obviously reducing caffeine can do that as well. So those are the kind of the, the physical and chemical. But in terms of uh, sorry, emotional stress, um, I think the first thing with this is getting is observing your thoughts is getting some insight because we are always running these processes I realized that I was I was doing this ruminating and you can catch yourself sometimes as soon as you start to become aware of it you'll realize that you spent 10 minutes going down the track of thinking these thoughts over and over again and you suddenly realize I've spent 10 minutes thinking about this and I'm feeling really negative and really stressed now and it hasn't got you anywhere um, so it's it, the first, the key is first having an insight into it and checking yourself and stopping that process when you're getting into that cycle of sort of negative or stressful thoughts. And um, a really good way of doing this actually is, is meditation. And I would never have thought I would be someone who meditates, trust me. <laughs> but without doubt, it was the game changer for me, certainly with my eczema and my health and my outlook. And what it is, it's, it's kind of taking you away from these these thoughts that are going on all the time, the sort of incoherence that we have, takes you away and it lets you ground yourself and just observe them, just observe them without any judgment. And it takes, uh, it's, it becomes a skill, it becomes something to practice at, just start it for a short period. But over time, you can get better and better at it and just disconnect from all these horrible stresses in your life and making you feel unwell. So I'd say meditation is one amazing way um, of doing it and the other way is doing something that lights you up so instead of staying in this red zone something that really relaxes and rejuvenates you we all have things that we love we you know give us energy so you know it might be dancing it might be reading a book it might be having a bath it might be watching a silly film it might be being stupid with your other half for two minutes a day even if it's two minutes you know just having these silly moments that make us human and um, light us up and give us energy um, I think are really important um, and there's, there's also things like changing your focus. Whatever you focus on, you tend to feel. So if you're, you focus on the stress and all the horrible things that are going on in your life, you'll tend to feel worse and worse and worse. So if you switch your focus to something positive, they've shown that gratitude, practicing gratitude, which is a really powerful emotion, can help you feel really relaxed and help improve your mood and, and has been shown actually to improve your immunity. They've, they've measured certain things like IgA, which is an immune-regulating uh, mm -hmm. chemical if you like, uh, which improves your immunity so um, and, and reduces cortisol as well uh, um, in your bloodstream. So practicing just, just 30 minutes a day, they did a study over five days uh, and it dramatically reduced it if you just did it over for 30 minutes a day. So just think what 10 minutes a day could do, you know, you know for yeah. a longer period of time. So yeah, those are kind of the main things that you can do to help, help combat stress. No, and those are really good. Uh, so... Uh, Lots of stuff there, but um, yeah, you can choose whatever you think might be causing the stress. It could be one person physical, one person chemical, one person emotional, or, or all three. But just start where you feel there's a definite need, the biggest need first, I would say. Oh, thank you for those. Those are good answers. Uh, I know a bunch of us could, could utilize some of those. So um, I guess my last question would be, what advice would you give to a first-time patient that's going in to a doctor's office because they have a skin ailment? Like, uh, what should we be expecting as protocol? Yeah. So, um, I think the first thing is to, and which is that I love about your message as well, is to educate yourself. You know, find out about what you think is going on, what your fears are, what you're worried about, and get, get as much information as you can before you know, before you're going, uh, de depending on the situation, this might be more appropriate for if it's been going on for a while, but I would say empower yourself with knowledge and the right kind of knowledge and, and your, your sort of resources and there's loads of different great charities that support, particularly, you know, eczema.org and the N NEA and there's one that we use in the UK called patient.co.uk which has lots of different um, information for, for lots of different um, conditions. So say educate yourself and so you've got your questions ready uh, because this is you remember um, it's you that has to take the medication it's you that has to take the advice so 
Um, you know, it's your journey, it's your choice what you do. So empower yourself with that, with that knowledge before you go, I'd say. I mean, obviously, when you, depending on the condition, um, the, the doctor will generally ask you some questions about your history and, and what you've done and examine you uh, and may even run some tests. Um, I would say probably as a, a universal thing for skin is we talk about keeping the barrier of the skin. And, you know, as I say, it's the large, largest organ in the human body. It protects us. And keeping it intact and healthy is really key. So they will probably talk to you about moisturizing and um, the importance of, you know, when your skin is wet, this is particularly pertinent for, you know, if you have eczema or you have a, a dry skin condition, you, when you're wet is when you lose a lot of the moisture in your skin. So slapping on something to moisturize you after you've washed. Um, usually typically ointments and greasy things are better than, than creams. But find one that suits you. We're all different. Um, so they probably talk to you about moisturizing. And I thought it might be pertinent to talk about um, probably steroids as well because they are used a lot um, in dermatology to reduce any acute inflammation, which is often what we go to the typically what we may go to the doctor about for, for a skin condition. Um, so I mean, steroids are. I would say I would say you should probably if you if you are advised to take steroids, there's three things that you should be sure of. And I know that you talk about this as well uh, on your website, but I would say know, be sure that you know what potency, how strong it is, that it, the different steroids, because the names are confusing, and there's a bit of overlap with them and the percentages, and so so know whether it's potent or you know very potent, moderately potent or mild, and know have a t do not leave that consultation room until you know how long you're supposed to use it for. And be very clear with your doctor that you know you, you you're both clear as to how long you're supposed to use it for, uh, or if you need to step down, how that would work. And I would also say how much you're going to use. So you talk about you know the fingertip unit. Mm -hmm. So knowing um, so classically, um, I'm sure you probably see seen not on Brian's website, but you know having knowing it's kind of the, the the final crisp from your finger to the tip of your finger. You squeeze a typical um, tube of, of steroid out onto there or anything that's called one fingertip unit, and that covers two palms of your hand. So that's how much you should be using um, to cover that sort of surface area on your body. Um, so just be clear about how much you should be putting on, where you should be putting it. And they may say different lengths of time for different areas because we know that different areas soak up um, steroids at a different rate, etc. So I would say just empower yourself with that knowledge and be really clear as to what the plan is with your steroid when you leave. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Um, well, I guess, is there anything else that you would like to share before we wrap up? Yeah. Um, so I just thought I'd um, sort of come up with like a couple of take-home points to kind of, because I know I've kind of, it can be a bit confusing, all the things I talked about. I get a bit excited about it, a bit of a geek in that way. But um, if you weren't going to do anything today, you know, if, if you have eczema or an inflammatory skin condition, I would say... Um, I thought about a few things that you could do. I thought about the top five things that you could do if you were going to go home today. Um, and they all begin with E. Um, so um, first is educate. Educate yourself. Um, the second thing is, um, is emollient. So it just means moisturizer. So E for emollient. Um, the third thing is E for emotions. So just being aware, having some insight into the fact that whenever we are going into this negative process of thoughts, that we are going to the red zone, that we're telling every cell of our body that our life is in danger and we're releasing all these hormones and it's not helping us heal. And just having insight into that first and, and other techniques which I can talk about to improve your emotional health and well-being. Um, the fourth E, I would say, is the environment. So this too talks about you know uh, physical uh, stresses, so anything that's sort of triggering it within the environment. And lastly, eating. I think what we put in our mouths is so important and getting rid of some of the things which can be pro-inflammatory um, and getting a really good clean diet and I've talked about various uh, things that you can do uh, and certain supplements you can try which can really help uh, and, and avoiding certain triggers that are inflaming your skin. So, so those are sort of five things that you can perhaps do today if you're suffering with an inflammatory skin condition, particularly eczema. And I'll end on just some three top things if you're stressed because I think most of us suffer... Um, you know, with, with emotional stress. And I would say if you're just going to do three things, if you feel that's your biggest trigger, first, as I said before, just observe it. 
And a really powerful way of doing this is doing, I actually uploaded a, there's an app that you can download on your phone for free. There's one that I use called Chime. There's Hourmate. There's quite a few free ones. And they basically chime every hour or however long you want, however often. And what I started to do is um, to have this go off every hour and just do a little audit as to how stressed I was and question why I was stressed and was it really necessary for me to be stressed. And just by doing that for 24 hours, I was really shocked at how often it's, it's a really good wake-up call. Um, so I would do that just to observe it. Don't judge it too much, but just to be aware. And the second thing I would say is something which allows you to retreat from those thoughts, to, to get away from, from that chatter, and that's by meditating. And there's some really good um, apps, again, that are free. Um, I'm obviously not involved with any of these people, so there's things like um, Headspace, or Take 10. So that's just that's supposed to be 10 minutes a day of meditation. It's kind of got a little cute card too. Really lovely, really simple. Everyone's got 10 minutes. If you And I used to do this and think, I don't have 10 minutes to, to meditate. But if you think you don't have 10 minutes to meditate, you definitely need to be meditating. So it shows how stressed you are. So I'd say definitely meditating. So there's um, yeah, Headspace. There's another free one that I found on YouTube. It's, um, it's called a six-phase meditation called, uh, by a chap called Vishan Lakhiani. Uh, through a, um, his company called On Harmonics, um, which is again free. You can just uh, listen to that. I've certainly listened to that before. And you can take there's so much, so much you can do on meditation. But those are just some free things that I found personally useful. And then the third thing is something to shift your mood, shift your focus. So whether it's something that lights you up each day, that you enjoy, a hobby that you've been denying yourself, a luxury that you've been denying yourself, or just practicing gratitude. You know, if you're gonna. Every morning when you wake up, before you let your feet touch the ground, before you grab your phone, just take a time for yourself and think of just one thing, one thing you're truly grateful for, whether it's a person in your life, whether an experience you've had, or a journey you've been on, or anything. And if you're able to feel it, you need to really connect with it emotionally and, and relive it. And just, just sit with that for 30 seconds, a minute, before you get out there. Just imagine sort of the ripple effects it can have in your day. Um, so yeah, those are some, some practical things that you can do. Um, I've just, I'm just, as I say, in the process of starting up my sort of um, excellent treatment model, and I've got a free. Um, you can just go onto my website and download. It's just a free video series, which is kind of similar to the stuff we've been talking about today, which talks you through this process of switching your emotional, um, your negative thoughts um, that can affect us in a really practical way. Of just a five-day course. I think it's about five or ten minutes a day, these little video inserts, um, which might help you. Um, but, yeah, essentially it's kind of gathering today everything that I talked about. Well, I will definitely be putting – I'll put your website up. I'm writing down all of these applications that I'll put up. And I'll even go back and write out those five E's that you gave because they were extraordinary. Like, this was great advice. Thank you so much for all of that. Yeah. I know many people – in any skin ailment or just in general if they're stressed you know could use some of these things sure. um so really thank you so much this has been great speaking with you um i actually look forward to looking up some of these applications just for myself so well uh, thank you so much for letting me um chat and share share a bit of my journey and just give some advice because we could all we could all do with a bit of less stress in our lives and, you know, we all deserve to be happy and healthy. So if even it's just a couple of minutes a day, just give yourself that gift and, you know, you'll see some real results. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Stanton. Take care.